Michael, how are you doing? I'm great. Yeah, Seth. you're glowing as always. It's, oh, thank you. It must be because obviously you've been the host for Coffee and Atta today. Yeah, I enjoyed it. How was it? It was great. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Yeah. And the audience was brilliant. So they played full out. Yeah. And we got them motivated and engaged. And yeah, it flowed quite well. Everybody gave good comments. So. Yeah. New experience for you in terms of hosting or? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, I haven't emceed anything. Yeah. You've been a speaker, obviously. You know, you're a you know renowned speaker and you're very accomplished and so forth. But in terms of hosting, and particularly our format, that's a, a new thing. You know, is that? It is a new thing. But what's yeah. good that I've been to Coffee and Atta several yeah. times, yeah. so I kind of know the format. Yeah. And so when I was preparing and thinking it through, yeah. then I obviously went, right, okay, these are certain things that happen. and That's the format and we want to try and contain. But then yeah. you put your own sort of twist and your own sort of unique style and so forth, and which obviously everybody you know, enjoyed today as well. So it's fantastic. I hope so, yeah. yeah. So I do like to engage the audience and get them doing something. Yeah. And rather than just sit there and yeah. just watch, yeah. you know, because it can be very boring yeah. if you're... Yeah. I, will, I want to talk a little bit about, obviously you were a speaker at one time as well in terms of Coffee and Atta going back a few months. That's right. Uh, how, how was that experience for you as a speaker at, 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 at the event? It was great. And in particular, I think, was the, you know, the preparation by the team yeah. that you employ yeah. and the communication yeah. that happened beforehand. And obviously it was Khaled at the time. Yeah. So he was really great. And then we had a meeting and talked about things and you wanted to learn something yeah. more about me and get to know the speakers yes. better. And that's yeah. really unusual. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think the Pathway Group yeah. definitely is unique in that. Mm. So well done for doing that. Thank you. And then also in terms of, you know, once the speaking was over, then going out and yeah. having a, a you know a wash up a, <laughs> brie, a kind of you know go out for a meal and have a chat over a yeah get to know each other properly and you know yeah. yeah spend some quality time together and so forth and, and and I think that is unique and well done to you and the team for doing that and and doing such a great job and keep that up because it it really has put you you know, in a aside from the yeah, rest of them out yeah. there. Thank you. Michael, but this, this, this conversation is not about us or me, but it's no. about, obviously we want to get to know a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, you know, your session was about LinkedIn. Tell us a little bit about your experience, your, you know, your, your sort of, your love of LinkedIn and, and social as a, as a whole. Yeah. So, I can, social media kind of captured my interest going back to about, I would say 2008, 2009. Mm. <clears throat> and I saw something bubbling up there that I realized was going to be big. Yeah. So I became a generalist, you know, I said, right, I can teach you about Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. And in fact, if truth were known, I could probably do that yeah. uh, today for anybody. Yeah. However, I enjoy working with the business community the most. Yeah. And I know that these other platforms are important for business as well. Yeah. But LinkedIn, I felt, was the best one, had the actually one of the most complex sites out there, yeah. but had a level of depth and a level of information yeah. that people were putting there about themselves mm. that you could actually engage at a deeper level with somebody. Mm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I decided, because it was business to business, which I enjoy, because that's mm. where all my yeah. Yeah, yeah. working experience has been, yeah that I wanted to help people mm. to leverage LinkedIn to their benefit yeah. and still realize that it's social, yeah. but it's also professional and it's business. Yeah. So I kind of put my marker down there and specialized on LinkedIn. So okay. Okay. I've been on LinkedIn since 2004, yeah. but I didn't take it seriously until 2009 mm -hmm. when I started growing my network. Okay, fantastic. Michael, you've got a, you've got a golden rule which I uh, broke. Yeah. And, and you sort of you know, came back and sort of slapped me on the hand and says, mm. you know what, watch it. Do you want to share that with me, with us? And yeah. Just remind us. So the golden rule <laughs> yeah. is to do with inviting yeah. people but you to have connect a, you, I'm going to interrupt here, but you have a unique style. I have a unique style. I'm just about to get there. <laughs> yeah, okay. And that is... When you send a personalized, when you send an invite on LinkedIn, most people press the connect button. And that fires off a standard invite that Guilt says, Guilty. Please, would you join my network on LinkedIn? Yeah. Right. 
and that's very impersonal. It still says something, but it's impersonal. And people, do, first thing people say, why? Why do you want to connect to me? Particularly if you send it to a stranger that you don't know or haven't met before. And this is what people are doing on LinkedIn. So the rule is, in connection with standing, sending the standard invitation, and that is never, ever, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, <laughs> never, ever, Ever, never, never, ever, never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever, never sent the standard invitation. That always gets me gets to laugh, Michael. And honestly, I know, yeah. and and I think when I heard it for the first time, uh, I just I just couldn't forget it. I, you know, even though. I, I sort of disobeyed that rule, I'm guilty as charged, but it was so easy sometimes just to sort of press, press that button. But it is, it is it's the wrong thing to do. But to actually, do. it's not your fault, it's LinkedIn who are at fault, right? Because they have set that connect button there, and what's their objective? They want to grow their network. Yeah. So they want to make it as easy for people as yeah. possible. But yeah. the, the personalization of it is, you have to press three dots on the mobile at the top of the profile. Yeah. Well, no one knows that it's behind three dots yeah, yeah. that you can then personalize it. People need to know about it, but LinkedIn yeah. aren't making it that easy for people. So yeah. it's natural, 99% of people just press the connect button. I get maybe one a month that is personalized. Personal. Wow. Everyone sends the standard one. Fact, but you get remembered and noticed if you send a personalized one. That's the message I'm trying to give to people. Yeah, yeah. If a, you send a personalized one, people will remember you for longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, is it you can just accept it, or people just sometimes a lot of them do accept it, but they won't remember who you are or what you're about. And so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So really, thank you for sharing that. In terms of obviously LinkedIn, a lot of changes go uh, taking place. Yes. What's your sort of take on it currently in terms of the marketplace with the social sort of graph and you know obviously all of the other stuff that's going on? Where is LinkedIn? I mean, obviously I'm I'm a, I'm personally a big sort of fan and supporter of LinkedIn and use it quite actively. But I just wanted your professional take really. Well, the, there is a lot of changes going on, and of course, LinkedIn has been bought by Microsoft, so everybody's watching to see what's going to happen. Yeah. So the two big messages are: there's a new desktop user interface mm. that is being released right now, mm. and about 35 percent of the 465 million, I think it might be the number, of people are getting that. So right. it's slowly rolling out to everybody. It's a very reduced version of what was there before. <coughs> so there's a lot of reduction in terms of some features, but it's much closer to the mobile app. Right. So in terms of transition from mobile app to desktop, yeah. it's very, very easy. Yeah. So I welcome it and I've seen it for a number of months now and I'm working I've got my version and it's very, very good. Okay. So that's one big news yeah. item. For the second big news item is Microsoft. Yeah. Well, Microsoft have a massive install base in corporates across the world. Yeah. A lot of people using Microsoft systems, Word, Excel, Outlook. Yeah. yeah. Um, everybody. You know. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Well, I don't because well, I'm a Mac user. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But um, so what's going to happen is there's going to be emerging, and you're going to see in Microsoft, you're going to see a lot more things that are LinkedIn based. Yeah. So inevitably, what will happen on your Outlook? Yeah you will see that person's email coming in and they'll show you their LinkedIn profile wow. linked to it. So wow. you can then connect to that person wow. easier. Um, I haven't seen it happen yet, but yeah. inevitably it's going to happen. Yeah. Also, you're going to be able to, if you're using Excel or Word or PowerPoint and you want to learn how to do something, mm. there's going to be courses that you can go to on LinkedIn, which is now called LinkedIn Learning used to be called lynda.com Linda, yeah. when they bought lynda.com it's now kind of merged into LinkedIn learning right, right. and if you have a premium account you can get that for free right. and but that's going to merge into Microsoft as well and then Microsoft right. have a, a um, CRM database which is called Microsoft 365 you inevitably some of that data from LinkedIn is going to merge into that as well so who knows what's ahead of us right. but it's going to be much more interesting to see how the two companies are going to merge things together. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Michael. I mean, I've, I see a lot of uh, uh, more and more these days where there's people out there who are sort of commenting and, and putting um, 
things that may have not have been on LinkedIn before and then there's people who come in and saying well actually this is not Facebook this isn't Facebook this is LinkedIn yes uh, there's a whole audience there and what's your take on that in terms of it's great there are many of them now yeah I mean every single week somebody's commenting <laughs> you know yeah. please this is not Facebook yeah the interesting thing is the people that are putting that up there those yeah. comments up there are getting a huge amount of engagement yeah. Right, so they're going to put a picture up there saying, "Here's an irrelevant picture that yeah. shouldn't be on LinkedIn," <laughs> yeah. and everybody jumps on that and goes, "I agree, I don't agree, I agree," and you're getting so from a strategy point of view to get engagement, it's a great comment to make yeah. on LinkedIn at yeah. the moment. But the I believe that the line between personal and business is yeah. very blurred now on social. Right. Facebook yeah. will become more business-like yeah. in years to come. Yeah. You know, they will have, I mean, already Facebook groups, yeah. there are a lot of business groups out there because actually Facebook are doing a better job on groups than LinkedIn, LinkedIn are. Yeah. Yeah. The groups on LinkedIn are useless because everybody's just posting links to content. Yeah. There are no conversations happening, whereas in LinkedIn groups, uh, sorry, Facebook groups, you are having these conversations taking place and therefore I think the lines are blurred yeah you know you are going to see more kind of personal things yeah. coming through and yeah. at the end of the day if yeah. we were really honest with ourselves seeing a personal story yeah. about somebody yeah. is actually more interesting than just seeing some content about an article yeah. or an advert that people are promoting themselves yes. so I'll give you an example there is a guy on LinkedIn, I don't mind mentioning his name, yeah. uh, Josh Quigley, yeah. and he's a suicide uh, survivor. And he's done, he's doing at the moment a challenge with cycling. And he cycled to Scandinavia, and then he came back. And then he's gone again to Scandinavia, and then right. he got stuck because of the snow and the ice, and then he, he was living in a tent. Right. And he's got this challenge <coughs> to cycle so many miles across so many, I think he's in Spain at the moment, and right. there were some photographs of him in Spain in his tent, and there was snow on the ground. Yeah. He's getting some of the most engagement, and it's on LinkedIn. He's getting the most engagement yeah. that I've ever seen on yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah. There's another lady that I know, I'm not gonna mention her name, in yeah. America, yeah. who was a very successful, worked in an organization, started doing social selling using yeah. LinkedIn, yeah. and she had a, a nervous breakdown. Yeah. And she wrote a blog post about her nervous breakdown and yeah. decided to be honest and open about it to see if she could help others. And before Christmas, she was literally admitted to an institution to keep her safe. Yeah, yeah. And she wrote her story, yeah. and she's had thousands, of, I think maybe 25,000 likes on yeah. it. And, and thousands of comments by people. Mm -hmm. So actually, a personal story is more engaging on LinkedIn than a business story. Wow. Wow. Because we are human, yeah. and we like the human story better than we do the business yeah. story. Yeah. I mean, you talked about you know people writing blogs and so forth. I mean, I still, I still, I still find that there's not many people who are, who are, who are doing that, particularly the fact that you've got a fantastic platform out there. Again, it's like with most tools, we probably use only a small percentage of you know what what's out there. So I just want to just wanted you to sort of share some quick tips of you know somebody who's who isn't that active on LinkedIn, what sort of things can they do just to you know up their game a little bit? Yeah, I think the the I have a philosophy that I say to people because the biggest challenge everybody has is time. Time, yeah. And I said just spend 20 minutes a day. Yeah. And if people want to have a, like I've got a yeah. PDF or something, a PowerPoint presentation that shows them what to do in yeah. 20 minutes yeah. on LinkedIn. And yeah. you can do it on your mobile. Yeah. And the, the important thing is to be active mm. a little bit each day. Yeah. If you haven't got 20 minutes, do 10. If mm. you haven't got 10, do five, but yeah. do something every day. That's tip number one. So show people that you're active and you're doing something. Your point about blogging on LinkedIn yeah. is a great one. They've got, a, sometimes they call it post, sometimes they call it article, they keep changing yeah. their name, but let's call it an article. You yeah. can write your own articles, yeah. and actually there's a little pencil on the homepage that you can click, 
add a photograph and write a little bit about what you're working on. Mm. It can be as simple as writing what you're working on today. Right. You don't have to share war and peace. Mm. You don't have to share the biggest wisdom in the world. Just share what you're doing right now. Yeah. Because that interests people. Yeah. Share your story. Yeah. That's my that's, hashtag. That's, that's hashtag. my yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. my my mantra is yeah. My brand is share your story. Share a little bit about what you're up to, what you're doing in your world, yeah. because people are more interested in that than writing an advert mm. about your business and what you would like them to buy, because that doesn't interest people. Yeah. People are turned off by that. Yeah. And so you don't need to be a blogger or a big writer or anything. Everybody knows you know, to write yeah, a little yeah. bit of English. Yeah, yeah. Just two or three paragraphs is enough. Add a nice image to it and then that will be shown on your profile and that gives people something to read other than just your your yeah. summary on yeah. LinkedIn and your experience and your background. Yeah, I mean you, you mentioned uh, uh, in our conversation that Facebook is getting more and more important particularly for business. I mean, what, what are the sort of changes and what, what's, what, where, where, where do you see Facebook sort of in the business sphere? Well, <clears throat> if you think about the amount of billions of people yeah. that are on Facebook yeah. and there are one and a half billion active users yeah. somewhere around that number on Facebook yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a massive audience yeah. in that audience you will have people of all ages yeah. Millennials are probably the biggest audience yeah. and yeah. they are you know whether they're in their 20s now mm. and going to work mm. they are still the Facebook you know kind of crowd yeah and that's where all their friends are yeah which who will become their business colleagues mm. so some of those people ha don't even know about LinkedIn when I did some training in colleges last year yeah kids that were between say 16 and 19 90 percent of them either didn't have a profile or didn't even know about LinkedIn wow. but they all were on Facebook yeah so why go to another platform yeah. when you can be on Facebook and do your engagement on Facebook? So it makes perfect sense for Facebook to become more business centric. Yeah. And we will see more of that happening. Yeah. There's another thing and that is Facebook advertising. Yeah. Facebook have made their advertising model yeah. really, really super cheap. You can advertise significantly to big audiences for a dollar a day which is like thirty dollars a month you can get your advert in front of very very targeted audiences and that's the key to the targeting yeah the targeting yeah. I mean LinkedIn do targeting too right but Facebook you can be super targeted right so you can be putting adverts out there yeah. that are going on to people's news feeds yeah. Um, news feeds as opposed to you know the banners down yeah. the side yeah. and when you've got sponsored content like that going through people are going to notice it yeah and over time it goes into the subconscious yeah and I know of, of people that are super active on Facebook yeah who are getting immense success yeah. there. yeah okay fantastic Obviously, with the, in terms of the social sort of graph and social sort of uh, uh, sort of tools that are out there, we, you know, there's obviously Twitter that we, you know, you and I both actively use. There's mm. a lot of people now that have sort of switched off yeah. from from from, tw from Twitter. Uh, you know, obviously Snapchat. You know, there's a lot of videos that they don't want to talk about. So I want to I want to just throw mm. those throw throw that with you and just you know just just do us a run of where you are with those in terms of your viewpoint. Twitter, Snapchat, yeah. videos. So it's really interesting that things are changing all the time. Yeah. And yeah, you're mentioning some of the big ones. In Twitter, you know, what's going to happen to them? I mean, I think their days are numbered, although a, a friend of mine, Richard Tubb... I hope so. I hope not. I mean, actually, I'm a big fan of Twitter. Yeah, also. Richard Tubb tells me yeah. they've got enough money to last for, I don't know, 15 years, you know. So they've got plenty of money yeah. in the bank. Yeah. Twitter has become very similar to LinkedIn groups where people yeah. are just posting for the sake of posting. It's Broadcast. automated. Just you know, when you follow somebody and you get an automated through Crowdfire or Community or yeah. Communit, yeah. you get just a standard message saying, thank you for following yeah. me. 
you kind of know that people aren't active. They just want an automated message going out. Yeah, yeah. So Twitter are suffering at the moment with growing their user base, mm. right? So they've got to do something dramatic, and it probably will happen. Yeah. I mean, at the moment, they're being saved by Donald Trump because his activity on Twitter means that everybody's focused on it again. Yeah. So they, he's done something good for an American <laughs> yeah. company. Well, yeah. So what? So then the others. Yeah. Um, Snapchat. Yeah. I started investigating Snapchat, and I I do actually know it's for a younger audience. Yeah. Although business are starting to use it, and yeah. there's a lot of promotions going on. But when Instagram became more Snapchat like. Yeah, I missed Instagram from like yeah. Instagram. Yeah, I stopped. Yeah. Developing Snapchat for yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. And instead, I've gone to Instagram okay. and I'm looking much more closely at Instagram. Now, I did a few tests on Instagram and I started following some people, posting some photographs. And if I compare the activity I get on Twitter, even Facebook, compared to Instagram, it's nowhere. Instagram is so much more active. Yeah. I get far more likes. On stuff on Instagram than I do on any other platform yeah. at the moment. Well. So Instagram, I would say, is the dark horse in the race. Well, they're not anymore a dark yeah. horse because their growth has been phenomenal over the last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And not that many people are there. So if you want to get in front of an audience, yeah. and I've actually just tested with an advert yeah. for seven days. I, I put an advert out there for seven days for my new... Um, webinar series called uh, LinkedIn Lectures Live, right. which is free to attend every yeah. week on a Monday at 8 p.m. Yeah. So it's on my website, stayingaliveuk.com. Yeah. Just a little plug. Yeah. Um, but LinkedIn Lectures Live, and I put a little advert on Instagram. I'm going to see what's going to happen over the next seven days, but it's just a pound a day. Yeah. That's all. So I'm just going to pay seven pounds to put an advert on Instagram for seven days. Oh. And it goes in people's news feeds. You know, you'll see it's sponsored and people can click through to it. Maybe I haven't got a big enough audience yet, but I can target, again, Instagram, they're part of Facebook, their targeting is really cute. You right. can decide which cities, which age group, oh. male or female. It's not as detailed as Facebook, but it's still there. Yeah, yeah. Videos? Michael? Videos. Yeah, they're doing live video now, yeah. Instagram, but you've yeah. got to be there to watch it. It's yeah. not saved. Yeah. So they've got live video on Instagram, they've got video, they've got you know, the little drawings yeah. and they've got stories yeah. in the same way that Snapchat yeah. stories. So they've copied some stuff from Snapchat, yeah. but I think they're appealing to a slightly older audience. Yeah, yeah. So I would say definitely invest a bit of time. You don't have to do a huge amount to begin with, but invest a bit of time into Instagram. Right. So LinkedIn Lectures Live you mentioned. Is LinkedIn that, Lectures Live, right. yeah. Is that, that's a webinar series? Yeah, new webinar series I'm starting yeah. every Monday at 8 p.m. for about 45 minutes. Right. It's free for people to attend. I'm going to share... What, what platform is that going to be on? It's actually on a brand new webinar platform called yeah. Demio. Demio. Demio.com. Demio. I started testing them last year. Yeah. A couple of young guys in America and they have done a fantastic job in reinventing the webinar platform. Yeah. And I'm going to test it out yeah. and I'm doing it for free and it's going to be for a limited period only. Yeah. I'm basically going to share with people what's happening on LinkedIn, updates, changes every week because it's always changing, yeah. showing the new platform, yeah. showing mobile. Yeah and then just giving some hints and tips away. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of people who've sort of embraced the whole live broadcasting mm. uh, scene. I mean, a lot yeah. of it on Facebook yeah. as well. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of platforms that I, that I was on previously, Blab was one of them, uh, they're, mm. they're no longer around. Mm. But, you know, we're, we're, what's your thoughts in terms of the whole sort of live uh, front? Yeah, this year, 2017, we're yeah. in, it's going to get even bigger. Yeah. So there are going to be potentially other players coming into the market. Uh, YouTube are probably going to reinvent themselves. They already do. You can already do can live do on it. YouTube, but it's using Hangout. Yeah. Um, there, there are going to be more activity, yeah. better quality. Um, yeah, it's going to change a lot. Yeah. So I think people are jumping on it and it yeah. might be getting a tad annoying yeah. to keep getting notifications to say such and such is live. Yeah. And people are already going, well, I'll watch it later. Yeah. 
because they know it's being saved. Yeah. Right? They'll go, oh, I'll, if I remember, I'll go oh, and watch it later. Yeah. Now, with Instagram, they're saying it's not being saved. You can't watch it later. You've got to watch it now. Yeah. So people are going to perhaps do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Twitter are, are going to have to do more in that field. And in yeah. fact, they are. Yeah. And of course, they've got Periscope. Periscope yeah. And Periscope is quite nice, actually. Yeah. I checked it out. I haven't done much myself, but yeah. I did check it out. And it looks quite nice. And you actually can watch Periscope on the desktop, yeah. um, which I think is also quite nice on your laptop. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't always have to be on mobile. Okay. So, yeah, as an engagement tool, I think people are going to do it more ad hoc, ad lib, you know, just share a quick live video, what my thoughts are and what I'm thinking about today. Okay. It, it will happen okay. more and more. Michael, you mentioned your hashtag is share your story. Correct. Um, uh, you've given us a little bit of a story about Josh. You've mentioned this other lady as well. Yeah. Just what's your general view in terms of business business people, anybody that's looking to do a presentation or whatever, along the lines of you know, any, anything in terms of story? Just, just, just wrap up for us in terms yeah. of your view and why you sort of encourage people to share their story. Yeah, as, as a, as any business is a brand. Yeah. Any individual is now a personal brand. Yeah. Therefore, everyone needs to share their story. Yeah. What I see happen on platforms like LinkedIn and even Facebook, people yeah. go, they talk in the third person. Yeah. They say, you know, Michael is a renowned speaker, LinkedIn trainer, mm. whatever. Mm. But that's not what people want to hear. Yeah. People want to hear, people want to be spoken to as if you're sitting literally like we're here yeah. across the desk talking about personal. your story, personal story. Once we get out of the way, when you go to a networking event yeah. like Coffee and Natter yeah. and you go, oh, what do you do? Yeah. And they go, oh, what do you do? And you run out of business things to talk about. You'll go, well, where do you live? Yeah. And have you got a family? Yeah. Or where do you go on holiday? Yeah. And what about your background? Yeah. Where have you come from? Yeah. You know, how did you get here? Yeah. So, for example, one of the things I'm doing is a new podcast series called Share Your Story. And I'm interviewing, in the same way that you're interviewing me, I'm interviewing business people yeah. that are running businesses from nine people or less. I want small business people. Yeah. And I would like them to share their story, how yeah. they got started in business, to inspire other people yeah. to start their business as well. Yeah. And when you listen to whether it was Keith Higgs that I've interviewed or a few other colleagues, and I'm doing some others over the coming yeah. weeks, when you hear their story from where they were born, where they went to school, you know, what how they got interested in business, yeah. who they worked for and then decided to run their own business and how successful or unsuccessful they were in yeah. the beginning. Yeah. It kind of paints a nice story about who they are and where they've come from. Yeah. So if you can translate that and share to people within your profile on social media, and particularly yeah. LinkedIn, yeah. share your story, share well, your, you're now a personal brand, you're a celebrity on social media, yeah. You've got to take that responsibility seriously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have downloaded downloaded it from iTunes yet, but I haven't had a chance to to, to, to listen to those. Uh, but it, it looks very very interesting. Uh, just to sort of wrap up, I mean, if somebody wanted to contact you, uh, I know you're on most platforms. Yes. Uh, how, how do they find you? Then? Well, the best the best way to find me is to search on Google and type in at Staying Alive UK. So my business is called Staying Alive UK. They can go to my website, stayingaliveuk.com. Or in fact, any platform I'm on, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, if you type in Staying Alive UK, you'll find me. Fantastic. Michael, thank you so much for being our guest host today. My pleasure. Please I enjoyed continue it. continue supporting us. You, you're part of our family. I will. Uh, you know, you're, you're an individual that's inspired me. You've, you know, it says I learned a lot from yourself and, and uh, we'll be working together uh, on other projects as well. So thank you for your support, Michael. Really Brilliant. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.